Hello and welcome to another video. This video is going to be my review of the new Samyang 24mm f1.8 autofocus lens. Okay, so quick disclaimer before we start. Um, this lens was sent out to me for free by Samyang. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, they haven't paid me or anything like that to make this video. They haven't even asked me to make this video. This video is just my thoughts on that lens. I, um, I won a competition on Instagram for astrophotography and they sent me out to trial. But also disclaimer, you might have spotted over here that I've already got a Samyang 85, 20 and 14 mil. I really like Samyang lenses, so there may be, be a bit of bias in this, but in terms of a very quick review, if you don't wanna go through all of this, then what I would say is, this is a very good lens, it's a very versatile lens. You would do incredibly well to find a lens at this focal length, um, at this price point, anywhere else that performs as well as this does. So that's that's that, very quick one, but let's get into the more in-depth review of the lens. So if you go onto the Samyang UK website and uh, click on this lens, first thing you'll see is my pics at the top of the website, which I'm obviously very proud of. Uh, but then if you scroll down, what you will see are the specs on this lens. So it's a 24 millimeter autofocus lens. The aperture range is from f1.8 to f22. It weighs in at 230 grams. It is really small, really compact. And the minimum focus distance on it is 19 centimeters. And then lastly, the filter thread size that it takes is 58 millimeter. Okay, so what do I think of the build quality of this lens? It is, it is a plastic, mainly plastic lens. Um, but it feels really well made. It feels incredibly light. It does have weather sealing on it as well. And uh, yeah, it, it feels decently made. So one of the most unique features on this lens is the fact that it has an, what's called the Astro Mode button. And what that is, is a, um, a button that you can hold on the side as a custom button. And what it will do is if you turn the camera off, turn the camera on, and hold down that button, it will take the lens straight to infinity and you can set that infinity mark. I've made a video on this and I will link it just above. Uh, but yeah, in terms of yes, it might seem like a gimmick, but actually this is what makes this lens so unique. So uh, it makes it much more versatile because normally when I'm shooting astrophotography, I want a manual lens and that's because I want to set the focus, I want to set it to infinity, make sure my stars are sharp and then I want to just leave it there and not move it. Whereas with an autofocus lens, it can, it will obviously hunt at, at night. It won't focus well to infinity on the stars. So what you can do with this then, yeah, if you check that video out anyway, you can set it to infinity so it will jump back to that point at any point, which is a really, really unique and great feature on this lens. It, it works well for me because it means that you can use it through the day as a normal autofocus lens. I'm shooting this on it now. This is shot on the 24 mil, but then I can go out at night and also use it as an astrophotography lens. It's a really good feature. The next thing then is to talk cost. So the cost of this lens is around 450, 460 pound in the UK. Now to put that into perspective for other lenses that I've found that are of similar focal lengths. So a similar Sony, there's the 24 mil 1.4, and that comes in at 1200 pounds. The, uh, there's a Zeiss APS-C 24mm 1.8 and that comes in at £790 and there is the Sony 24mm 2.8 which comes in at £630. So while £460 might be uh, you know, quite an expensive price point in terms of what you might think Samyang lenses cost, if you compare them to anything else that is of a similar focal length and has similar features, um, it's a very cheap lens. So I've also done a video comparing this lens to the Sigma 24mm 1.4 and that is a previous video that I will link up there and long and short of that is that basically uh, wide open the Sigma is sharper in the middle and the Samyang is much better in the corners. Okay so now I should really go ahead and show the sharpness in the corners. So this is shot wide open yeah so um, center for me, detail-wise, it's decently sharp. Um, chromatic aberration and coma, you can see a little bit there wide open. You can also see a very dusty sensor. Uh, going into the corners, I don't know what you're hoping or would necessarily see, 
but you can see that it renders pretty well, I would say. Um, yeah, I do apologize. I don't, I don't do this sort of thing very often. Um, but I do do a bit of, of this pixel peeping stuff in my uh, Sigma versus Samyang comparison vid. Okay, so this might be a bit easier. So we can go up and see the stars right in the corners. This is shot five seconds wide open ISO 6400. And you can see that there is some trailing in the corners there. And a little bit of chromatic aberration, a little bit of coma there. A little bit over here. But it is not bad. Um, and yeah, again, still pretty decent detail in, in the uh, middle of the frame there. And yeah, a lot less of that coma chromatic aberration there. Down in the corners, can't see a whole heap, but not not soft i wouldn't say not soft i wouldn't say especially wide open as well let's have a look at the stars in the middle i say reasonably sharp i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say that i've nail focused but i think i'm pretty close on, on focus to infinity there next thing to show is the bokeh on this lens and while i'm obviously i shoot astrophotography so i don't really shoot too much bokeh shots um, you can see behind me in the video clips that i'm shooting here that actually the, the fall off the bokeh is is quite nice so you can see the stars around it behind i think it's a decent bokeh okay so how is the autofocus the autofocus is slower than my sony 28 mil f2 lens and that's the only other autofocus lens that i own and it is slower than that to react but it is silent and it is reasonably fast and it is accurate. I, I don't know whether it's missed focus on me at any point throughout this, but I'm assuming it hasn't. Um, does that work at night? No, it doesn't. The autofocus doesn't really work at night at all, but nor does Sony, nor do any others that I've tried. So then, the only other thing I can think I can say is that my final thoughts on this lens. So. I think that this lens is very decent compared to anything else that is of similar in the range. Um, I personally, I prefer manual lenses for shooting my astro because I also shoot vlogs while I'm out doing astrophotography. And uh, with the autofocus lenses, if you switch between video and photo, the autofocus turns back on and off. Uh, which is quite frustrating. I like to be able to just set my manual lens at infinity and it will stay there the whole night. But having said that, this lens is way more versatile than any of those. I wouldn't be able to shoot any of this sit down stuff using my manual focus lenses. Um, it, it just is much more difficult to nail focus when I'm working on my own. Um, so for that reason, that makes this lens uh, very versatile. So for someone who does do street photography, daylight photography, landscape, whatever, not just astro like me, then it makes it a very versatile lens. Also, in terms of my Astro, personally, I prefer a wider lens. So my favorite lens at the moment is my, is my Samyang 20mm 1.8. I, I like a wide shot, but that one isn't too wide. It's an absolutely fantastic lens. If they brought out the autofocus version of that lens, then I would most likely have to buy it. But that's it. That's it for the video. Um, final thoughts, very good lens. Um, I'm sure that if you buy it, you won't regret it. And uh, for astrophotography anyway, it's uh, not necessarily something that I'll use all the time, but it will always be in my bag. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll hopefully see you again soon. Take care.